Hi guys, and welcome to a new episode of NJORC. I have some exciting news to share because I've partnered up with a new brand and they sent me one of their latest servos that has a lot of cool features that I'm going to show you right here in this video. I'm excited to share with you all that I recently partnered up with uh, a new brand called Teta and they've sent me one of their prototype servos the Razer D1 um, this servo will be hitting the shops really soon so keep an eye on that if you're interested in buying one after this video um, but it has a bunch of really cool features that I'm gonna walk you through in this video so the new Razer D1 servo from Teta was in this box but I already went ahead and installed it in my R31 house GRK drift chassis. Also uh, a bit of a sneak peek because I haven't shown anyone this chassis yet but this is one of my new drift chassis that I've been building on the side um, so you can have a quick look at this but the video will mainly be about the Razer D1 servo. Um, so this servo has a bunch of really cool features and the reason why I put it in this uh, GRK chassis, my drift chassis, is because it is a servo that's very well suited for drifting especially for rear-wheel drive drifting and it is because it's not just a servo it also has a gyro built in so this is something that's very new as far as I know I haven't seen anyone else do this before um, but basically it has uh, the servo and the gyro built into the housing of a low profile servo so it's very small so basically it is what you would expect from any other brand uh, of drift servos it's an aluminium housing, low profile size, uh, it has metal gears, plenty of speed and torque for any rear wheel drive drift chassis. Um, but the cool thing is that you can set both the gyro and the servo up via um, NFC connection. So you can use the NFC connection on your phone uh, with the Tata app that uh, belongs to the servo. You can just download that for free from the website um, and with that you can set up a bunch of different parameters for both the gyro and the servo. Like I said, I already went ahead and installed it in my GRK. Um, good thing to know about this servo is that it's very easy to set up for any beginner uh, who gets this and hasn't played around with one of the more complicated uh, adjustable gyros or servos, like for example the Samwa servos or the Overdose or Copropo um, Dice gyro. Uh, both of those have a lot of settings, but maybe they're not as easy for a beginner to play around with. Good thing is that this one actually is pretty much plug and play. So what I did is I simply just bolted it into my chassis, made sure the servo horn was right in the middle, um, chose a new profile on my transmitter so it's all uh, everything set to neutral, and plugged it in. It's two wires, uh, one for your third channel, so you can adjust the uh, gyro gain from your transmitter. Uh, I've had, I have it set up on one of the dials here in the front, but you can choose whatever button or whatever else you want to use for it. Um, and the other one's obviously for the servo uh, signal itself, for steering. Um, so like I said, I plugged it in, uh, switched it on, and it centered by itself. Um, I haven't. I didn't need to set up the endpoints or anything like that. Uh, no need to calibrate. Um, it just works. Um, so basically, if you if you plug it in for the first time, you switch on your um, you switch on your transmitter, your ESC. Uh, the gyro will not do anything because your transmitter is probably set up to zero to neutral. So if you're playing around with your uh, third channel to set up your gyro um, you can either go plus 100 or minus 100 and the cool thing about it is that it uh, that plus 100 is your normal uh, gyro direction minus 100 is reverse so if you find out you switch it on you move your chassis around and you see it steering in the wrong direction uh, with the gyro you just basically go from plus let's say 50 percent to minus 50 percent and it will have the exact same gain, but you will have the correct direction of steering. Um, so it's, it's all very easy. Um, you do not have to use the app in the beginning. You can just use it as is. Um, some of my other um, uh, Teta teammates who have been trying the server before me, 
they haven't played around with the settings at all they've just plugged it into the car and drove it and really liked it uh, and it worked um, so that's good news then if you do want to have a play around with the app you can uh, and then it opens up a world of possibilities with a bunch of different settings uh, to change up both the gyro and the servo right so let's play around a little bit with the app shall we uh, good thing to know uh, and I found out the hard way if you want to use the NFC to set up your servo you have to make sure that your car is shut down so um, switch off the ESC like I'm doing right now and if it's powered off uh, the power is off then you can start setting up the servo so what we're gonna do now is uh, connect my phone um, to the servo with the NFC uh, right now the app the Tata app it's only available for Android phones uh, not yet for iOS maybe that's something that will be added in the future at least for now it's just Android uh, that it works with and you will have to have the NFC connection so if it's a much older phone maybe you're in trouble but uh, most modern phones will have uh, NFC connectivity so it's no problem right so um, I'm gonna open up the Tata app where is it Tata here we go so if you open up the app first thing you see and let me try and show you on the screen is uh, a news feed with all kinds of information about Tata so some news about products and so on uh, but also some news or reports test reports from other pilots other drivers um, because Tata doesn't only make stuff for cars they also make servos for uh, planes helicopters and other flying RC stuff so in here you will have uh, yeah all kinds of news basically like a social media news feed based around Tata products um, the thing that's most interesting is up up on the top uh, it's called parameter if you click on this uh, you will get a screen that says ready to read data so from here you can actually start adjusting your servo um, so let me just do it my NFC is here on the top corner of my screen um, so all I have to do is touch the bottom cap of the servo and it should um, should read the information of my servo there you go so what I have now is a list full of options. So these are all parameters that I can adjust on my servo. Um, there's stuff like uh, the neutral position. And actually, if you scroll down, you get um, a little explanation about what each of the settings do. So that's very helpful. Um, I've been messing around with it before. So there's servo speed. Um, there's your dead zone. Uh, there's something called delay, which is super helpful because it delays uh, the centering of the servo um, while you're counter steering in a drift um, and this really helps because it sort of mimics the self steering of an actual car of a real drift car uh, and it makes all the difference um, it's really nice so let me just change one of the settings so in this case it's the delay um, I played around with it before with the, just the app um, so the standard setting for this hold on let me see if I can do it. there you go the default setting is 120 I set it back to 50 um, so now I'll put it back to 120 again so it's back to the factory settings so I've adjusted the parameter and if I want to write it to the servo uh, what I do is I click right hold it up to the NFC and there you go right successful so what I've done now is set up uh, changed something on the parameters of my servo or the gyro uh, written it to the NFC chip that's in uh, the servo casing um, and now if I switch on the car it will have the adjusted settings um, for more information about what exactly all of these parameters do um, because there's quite a few um, yeah you can scroll down um, there's a bunch of stuff you can do and then this is the, these are the drift settings but there's like uh, um, Sanwa SSR compatibility too uh, there's a few extra things you can do um, you can play around with it if you want to know exactly how it works at least for drift cars uh, I would recommend watching the video made by uh, my German Tata teammate uh, Wolf. Uh, he also runs RCOMG Germany. Uh, he has a YouTube channel and on there you can find exactly how to uh, connect to your servo, how to set it up, how to use the app. Um, so I would really recommend looking at that. Right, so that's the app. Let's move on. Now with the parameters adjusted with the app, uh, let's see if it still works. 
probably it does. Switch on the transmitter, switch on the ESC, and there you go. Works as it should, perfect. Um, let's turn off the ESC because the fan always makes noise. Anyway, so I really want to thank uh, Tata for sending me this brand new Razer D1 servo. Um, I'm very excited to start testing it on the track as well. Um, so my GRK is almost set up, so hopefully next drift day I can start really playing around with this servo and gyro combination and see how it works on the track. Um, until then, I want to thank you for watching EnjoyRC. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Um, and also have a look at my Instagram if you want to see more of my RC car collection. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.